My artistic direction was set fairly early on. I grew up in Portland, Oregon, and I was 14 years old at the time, and I had been skipping school for about six months. It was pretty easy to do. My mother would leave early from work, and as soon as she did that, I would ditch my bag and my books, and instead I'd grab paper and pencils and head out into the hills and spend my days drawing. Sometimes when the day was over, if it had been a particularly long day, I'd take a break and I'd go to the museum to look at the paintings. And one day in particular, for whatever reason, instead of going into the museum, I decided to go next door. There was a building there, it was an old Masonic temple that had been mostly unused for quite a while. They had administrative offices there and they stored some leftovers from the museum. And so as I walked up the steps to the temple and walked in, I was completely unprepared for what I was gonna see. I saw the most amazing thing. There were castaways, leftovers from a hundred years ago. They used to teach the students to draw and they would draw plaster casts of Greek statues. And these leftover artifacts as I saw them, had more life than anything I had ever seen before. They were frozen, they weren't moving, but I couldn't convince myself that they weren't alive. They seemed to breathe. As I walked around the room, they followed me. And to this day, that's been the defining moment of what I want to create in my work. A real work of art to me, a piece has to breathe. It has to feel more alive than alive, and that moment has to be frozen in time with all of that vitality and energy set permanently and unmoving. Once I had discovered the Greek statues, there was really no going back for me. I also came across a book by Kenneth Clark that was called The Nude at the time, in which he discussed the use of the body in art, and I was incredibly attracted to the way Michelangelo was able to express the tragic, and not only the beautiful, through his work. And that pretty much led me to decide I had to go to Florence, which I did when I was 16 to attend art school. And when I was there, uh, I actually saw something I hadn't expected, and I think it came in Santa Maria Novella when I saw the frescoes of Ghirlandaio that Michelangelo had helped paint when he was an apprentice. And the sheer scale was overwhelming. He had created not just one, but a series of worlds larger than life that you could mentally project yourself into and when you were in there every detail was as, was just as alive as it was in the statues the curls of the hair the gestures of a hand a barking dog the trees in the distance these delicate florentine cypresses the architecture he created something that to me seemed more real than the real world because he projected it from inside of him and on top of it there was again a frozen symphonic aspect to it the lines and the rhythms they were the paintings were designed like the facade of a building they were just so solid and architectural and almost musically as in a symphony there would be on top of this solid architectural structure lilting delicate rhythms and passages and the whole thing was again so balanced that it seemed to exist outside of time and I knew that this is what I wanted to create. That scale and that complexity of narrative combined with the abstract qualities was what my work was going to be about.
As I came to love the art in Florence, there was something that still stuck for me though. It was as much as I discovered in this work that I loved, as much that was beautiful, it could never exist for me without conflict. I had grown up in the 1980s and 90s on the west coast of the United States, essentially in a world without art. And seeing this, I knew I could never quite step into it like a warm bath. There was always a conflict. And that conflict for me was the act of embracing beauty became an act of rebellion against so much of what I knew and had grown up with that it shaped my work in a slightly different way. It almost became a rebellion against the 20th century. All of the ideals throughout the 20th century, the big ideas, capitalism, communism, the way every aspect of life from art to music to food became dominated by economic interests more so than any other, that to fit into that world, you had to yourself conform. You had to serve the interests in a very twisted way because economics never really expressed for me what it was to be a human being and I don't think they really do for other people. And so in that conflict, it began to solidify my ideas for me that what I was turning away from in the art of the 20th century was the the idea that in the death of God in society, so to speak, that monotheism didn't go away, that Christian Judeo idea was simply replaced by other monotheistic ideas, capitalism and communism, in which one answer would solve every problem and every aspect of life was subjected to economic interest and could not exist outside of that paradigm. And so in turning to this work, I realized what was so profound and beautiful to me was that moment created by the art itself and by the architecture was a way of relocating yourself, myself, in sensual reality, in the immediate, visceral, palpable reality around you, and removing yourself from essentially the Dante's hell of life dominated by a single idea in which everything else has to conform to that idea or be, be obliterated and removed from the equation. And I think art has a very important role in this that can actually, it sounds over the top, but I think it can actually heal the world. I think that's what human beings, the way we lived for millions of years, and it's something that to the degree we separate ourselves from that visceral moment of life, we start to rely on drugs and psychotherapists to adjust ourselves to a reality that no longer reflects us. We can't evolve as quickly as our technology. And that's why I think art is more important now than actually it ever was in the past. The conflict of my art and to a large degree of my life has been the reconciliation of these two polar opposites. And I find that the only place they really seem to come together is on canvas. And they don't always live together in a happy or an easy way, but somehow they start to make sense with each other. And that's why I've continued to paint. <laughs>